Have you ever wanted to own a national treasure? This is probably the only opportunity you ever will have. Today I'm presenting for sale a United States national treasure in the form of a solid silver congressional presentation sword issued for heroic actions during the War of 1812. After the end of 1812, Congress decided to award swords to a number of naval officers for actions during that conflict. All of the swords are uniform pattern and the blades were made by the famous sword maker of Philadelphia, William Rose. Only 67 swords were issued to junior warrant officers who were sailing masters and midshipmen during four engagements during the War of 1812. One of those engagements was the heavy sloop of war, the USS Wasp, against the British heavy sloop of war, the HMS Reindeer, on June 28, 1814. Now the British Reindeer was a much heavier ship equipped with 24 cannons. The American ship Wasp only had 22 cannons, a real David and Goliath story. The ships became engaged off the coast of Plymouth, England, and a short but very fierce fight ensued. The Wasp defeated the Reindeer in just about 19 minutes, which was a devastating blow for England. The swords were ordered by Congress with a cost of $250 each. They were to be ordered of the highest quality that could be made at that time. The blades were made by famous sword making family of Rose, Philadelphia. They were engraved and etched by master craftsman John Muir of Philadelphia. I'm going to show you the blade now. There were two patterns of this congressional sword. One was made in brass. The rare one was made of solid silver. This example is solid silver. It's a straight double-edged blade, finely decorated with etched designs, floral sprays, panoply of arms, and the historic presentation to Frank Tuscan. Frank Tuscan, midshipman, reindeer, captured June 1814. During this engagement, the Wasp suffered 11 killed, 15 wounded, and two died of wounds, including this midshipman, Frank Tuscan. He was mortally wounded during the engagement and died of wounds he received two months later. The reverse side of the blade bears similar floral sprays, a picture of the naval engagement, and a motto in Latin, which means, he who aims highest, rises highest. The ricasso of the blade is stamped Rose, one of the most famous sword makers in American history. The blade does have a repair, I'm gonna show you right here, but you can really overlook that minor issue because of the historical significance of this sword. The grips on both sides depict a mermaid holding a vessel over her head in the highest relief carving. The pommel is cast in the form of a Roman head wearing a classical helmet. Just below the pommel is a knuckle bow, which swings out and is incredibly pierced and chiseled, bearing Lady Liberty wearing a Liberty cap on an oval medallion. This large clamshell shows master engraving and relief work in the highest manner possible. With floral scrolls, a large eagle perched on top of a cannon. There are crossed anchors and flags in the background in the finest detail, and the underside of the guard bears the letter U.S. separated by a large wreath, also executed in the finest detail. This is an incredible piece of silversmith work from the early period of our country. The workmanship is just incredible, finest detail possible. The quillion here terminates above the blade in a flaring finial with floral directions, and the entire hilt is solid silver with gold gilt covering it. The scabbard wasn't present when this sword was discovered, but it's a museum recreation of the original consisting of a black leather scabbard with solid silver mounts. These are the exact same mounts that would have been on the original sword. They are done by a master craftsman. They're solid silver with gold gilt. The solid silver throat depicts floral and scroll motif centered by Neptune's trident the middle mount is ornamented with floral sprays in high relief. 
and the drag is incredible. It bears a fouled anchor with a sea creature entwined around it in high relief, and the border of the drag is ornamented with floral border, a very rare and historic national treasure. This exact sword is pictured in U.S. Naval Officers, Their Swords and Dirks by Peter Tweet. And this is exactly the sword pictured here. There is a lot of research done and available on these swords, a lot of information to read. This is one that actually bears that sword. Another one is Small Arms of the Sea Service by Colonel Robert Rankin on page 20. There's an entire page dedicated to this type of sword. These are super rare congressional presentation swords. They are not offered on the market. Now this sword also comes with a dossier of research, including documentation from the Department of Navy and a facsimile of documents collected throughout the years. There is just too much to know about this sword to cover in this short time, but it's available in reference books. We can make some copies of the reference books if you want. I have to say, in my 30 years of dealing in military artifacts, I have never come across such an important piece of American naval history that's offered for sale. Most of these swords are in institutions, museums, and in private collections perpetually. Within the last five years, one of these swords came up for sale and sold for $70,000. Today, you have the opportunity to own this exceptionally rare piece of American military naval history. Opportunities like this do not come along, so don't hesitate. If you have interest in this item, we only have this one, and to my knowledge, there are none other available for purchase anywhere in the market at this time. I really hope you enjoyed looking at this national treasure. It was my pleasure to show it to you today. This is item number M1025. This is an American national treasure. This is the Congressional Presentation Sword for the War of 1812, and that's $41,995. Item number again, M1025. Like I said, this is an American national treasure. This is a Congressional Presentation Sword for the War of 1812.